Good morning from Angola Camp. I'm going to go out the tent here. Take a look at the river. Goose flying over. Good morning, Goose. There's my coffee. Good morning, coffee. Sunrise. And we are going to do some of our exercises this morning from the Tracker Mentoring Manual. We're going to start with the tracking box over here, which is on our way to the driveway. So if I go over here, you can see our tracking box. Usually what happens is I start on one side. So for example, I had started on the right side and over a week ago I had put in a set of tracks and then every day I put in a set of tracks right next to those ones. So every day there's a new set of tracks going from right to left or starting from right to left. And right now you can see there's kind of a gap between, you can see there's one set of tracks on the right and then there's like four sets of tracks on the left. And that's because yesterday I started over on the right. So you can still see some very faint impressions of tracks in that gap in the middle. But the ones over here on the left are far more clear. And then my ones from yesterday, you can still see a lot of detail. Now, I always tell people try to wear the same pair of shoes. But you know what? If you're wearing a different pair of shoes like I was in these instances, then do it anyway, because you're gonna benefit from it regardless. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my tracks from today next to the ones from yesterday. And all I do on my way out to the driveway to do my 10 minute walk is I walk through the tracking box. Tracking boxes are extremely useful. I had an incident last week where we were trying to identify how long ago some buffalo had been in our area. And um, we estimated between two and three days, but we weren't really sure. And we got back and we were able to look at the tracking box and pinpoint it to about two days because the substrate where we were looking at the buffalo tracks was very similar. It wasn't in a microclimate or something. So this is our driveway. This is my morning 10 minute walk. So I open the gate, I check around for lions and things like that. We did have a lion walk through a couple hundred meters away roaring last night. We also had a hyena that was so close. It sounded like it was right in camp, but it wasn't. Okay, so this is the driveway here at Ingala Camp. And this is my morning routine. If I can only spend a few minutes out here, I do. If I can spend longer, I do. But basically, I want to walk and I want to look. You can see here are my tracks from yesterday. And I look at those and I see how they age. And I also take a look at all the little partial tracks of all the little animals here. You can see there's circles on the driveway or partial circles. Those are from yesterday as well. I'm seeing really nice hornbill tracks here. I'm seeing Franklin tracks. I'm also seeing, it's kind of not as easy to see in this substrate because of the tire tracks. But if I go ahead and circle some of these, maybe you'll be able to see them better. So I'm gonna make one bigger circle along these tracks here. And then if I do, this is a left, that's a left, that's a right, and that's a right. Okay, so if we stand up, you can see, you can actually get a sense of the scale of this. And look at that. It is a tiny little antelope walking track on track. And if we look at the measurement, the actual measurement of these, It is 2.5 or less 
centimeters. Okay. And they're all track on track. So that one's track on track, that one's track on track, that one's track on track, and that one's track on track. And they're tiny. The track is tiny, the stride is tiny. So you always want to consider baby animals. Um, so things like Inyala, um, Impala, you know, any of the, the basic, you know, the babies. But, um, and we would see the tracks of adults here. So if we have babies, we expect the adult to be here, right? At least the mother and Yalas are often in small little family groups. So I would expect to see more bigger tracks here. This is by itself. So we go straight to our dwarf antelope. Our dwarf antelope here include Diker, Steambuck, Clipspringer, and Sharps Fricebuck. We don't have Steambuck right here. This habitat is not open enough for them. They really like open areas. Um, we do have diker here. They like these mixed, you know, scrubby brushlands, some open areas, some forested areas. We do have plenty of diker here. Clip springer, which you would only find in rocky areas, so I wouldn't consider them. So you're down to diker and sharps rice book. So if I come and take a look at the books, I can show you the difference here. These are bushbuck, impala, diker, and steambuck tracks. Don't have the sharps in here, but I do have it in this book here. So if I go to the page with the sharps, there we go. And we put it under the diker here. You can see that the track is actually much smaller. If you look, Sharp's Thricebuck is between 2 and 2.5 centimeters, whereas the Diker is around 3.7 to 3.8. So the way that these charts are laid out, these are comparison charts, so it's another example of an exercise that you're asked to do in the manual, where the front foot is on the top and this one is the hind foot of each species. And you can set up your charts any way you want to. But all the little handwritten notes on there are my notes. And then we go back here to the sharps and we have a picture of the animal. Tiny little animal up to 7.5 kgs. And this track here, you can see it's very differently shaped than the diker, than the steambuck, than the impala, than the bushbuck, which is a great thing about the comparison charts, right? So we can see that there is, there does tend to be a little gap, a little channel in the middle. And you saw that in the tracks with that little channel of sand. Um, they tend to be rounded on the outer edges, but sometimes they appear straight depending on when the sand falls in. You can see some of the photos here in Lee's book. And this is an illustration of a midden. So somewhere out there will be a midden area. In the U.S. that's considered a food term. Here that's considered a latrine. So both the male and the female will use a latrine repeatedly. And later today, we're gonna see if we can find one and put a camera trap on it. And they probably have a very small territory around this area. We often have their tracks right in camp. So they do come in at night. Sometimes we find little areas where they've bedded down at night too. So basically just the act of coming out here for a few minutes every day will help me with my track aging. It will also help me with my track identification, you know, because I'll see different things and I can look them up and I can ask questions. I can photograph them. You know, there's birds, there's invertebrates, there's reptiles. I saw a frog, their track um, coming out of the little bath that we have under the tap here, the frog's track. So, I mean, everything is out here, you know, it's just a matter of going and looking at it. And then, of course, you want to just not just look at the good tracks. You want to look at the crappy tracks that are in between the good tracks. Because those are the ones that teach you the most about the tracks of the animal. So that when you're out there, I mean, let's face it, how often do you see a perfect track of an animal? It happens, but it's not, you know, the classic track that we expect. So if you can recognize partial tracks, that's going to be, that's going to serve you a lot better than just being able to recognize the perfect ones. So we've got track aging in the track aging box. We've also got it in the 10 minute walk here on the driveway. 
as well as spore recognition, practicing that. And then we've also got um, crappy tracks, the lessons learned in the tra crappy tracks. And we can go back and journal those too and include journaling and reporting the weather in our weather journal as you know, part of our routine that maybe only takes 20 minutes a day. Of course, if I had come out here this morning and there had been fresh leopard tracks, there may be lion tracks on this driveway. Like I said, I did hear lion tracks or lions roaring last night. So there might be lions. But if I had found those when I came out here, I probably would abandon my plan to just look at Sharp's Heisbach tracks and report them to you. And I would have instead decided to trail the lions. And I still may do that. 